Uh, mm. Oh, what am I doing? Uh, oh. oh, I'm sick of doing all this work. <laughs> Let's see. This is this is my one of my workspaces. This is in our dining our crowded dining room. I'm gonna see what Ed is up to. I know he's watching he's watching the Rachel Maddow show. Oh, there's Rachel Maddow. Oh, should I? You want? You want? Why don't you start over again? It's kind of the upscale credit. Okay. Oh, thank you, Eddie. Eddie was very nice. He he put Rachel at full screen. So I'm going to sit here. American Express as a brand. It defined them as kind of the upscale credit card for celebrity types, or at least for important people. The tagline from these old, the, these old ads is, don't leave home without it, and that, that tagline survived for decades thereafter. But the gimmick from these brilliant ads that they did in the 1970s, the gimmick in these ads, for some reason, did not survive, even though it was great. Watch this. You know me. Without my character, a lot of people don't. That's one reason I need the American Express card. This machine's another. I put my card in here, punch my special number, and I can get up to $500 in American Express travelers' checks at major airports all around the country. After all, even the king of swing can use some extra loot. To apply for a card, call 800-528-8000. The American Express card. Don't leave home without it. No way. That's Benny Goodman? I wouldn't, I, right? So the, the, the premise of the ad is, I am a famous person whose name you would know, but you don't recognize me looking at me. I am important, but the only way I can get myself treated with the importance that I deserve is by using this card. This card that you too can have. That was, that was the premise of the ad. They had the awesome Benny Goodman one, but they did it with other notable people as well. Do you know me? I'm one of the astronauts who walked on the moon. But when I walk in here to rent a car, they don't always recognize me. That's why I carry an American Express card. Do you know me? You'd think having run Wimbledon, people would recognize me. But without my racket, they don't. So I carry an American Express card. Do you know me? I was treasurer of the United States, so many people know my name, but not me. That's why I carry the American Express card. It's welcome all over, and that makes me welcome all over. Sure, it's super to have my signature on $60 billion, but for traveling and entertaining, it's a lot better to have my name right here. Francine Neff turns the job of United States Treasurer into awesome corporate sponsorship deal. Uh, that was also U.S. astronaut Charles Conrad Jr. and Wimbledon champ Virginia Wade. These ads were so great. And, and, and we know that they also did one of these ads for a man named Bill Miller. Now, that particular American Express ad was referenced in a great piece in the New York Times today about historical vice presidential picks. I would not have known this ad existed before I read about it in the Times today. But we looked all day for it in the archives. And right before airtime, just moments ago, we found it deep in the NBC News archives. Watch. Do you know me? I ran for vice president of the United States in 64, so I shouldn't have trouble charging a meal, should I? Why with this? They treat me as though I'd won. <laughs> William E. Miller. They treat me as though I'd won. He did not win. Uh, William E. Miller, Bill Miller, was Republican presidential candidate Barry Goldwater's choice for vice president in 1964. Before they picked Congressman Paul Ryan for VP this week, the last time the Republican Party picked somebody out of the House of Representatives to be VP was in 1964 with Bill Miller. And of course, he was perfect for that You Don't Recognize Me American Express ad a decade later in 1975 because Bill Miller never became vice president. He and Barry Goldwater lost very badly. Uh, but it wasn't for the lack of awesome ads like this one. Senator Barry Goldwater speaking with General Dwight D. Eisenhower at Gettysburg. We keep getting back to the subject of war and peace. And in this campaign that... Uh, Congressman Bill Miller and I are engaged in for the presidency and the vice presidency because we constantly stress the need uh, for a strong America. Uh, our opponents are referring to us as warmongers. 
and I'd like to, to know what your opinion of that would be. You've known me a long time, and you've known Congressman Miller a long time. Well, Billy, in my mind, this is actual Tommy rot. <laughs> Campaign ads were different then. Despite the awesomeness of having Ike on their side calling their critics Tommy rot, Barry Goldwater and Bill Miller, the last Republican ticket to have somebody from the House of Representatives as VP, Barry Goldwater and Bill Miller just got clobbered. I don't think it was because of the choice of Bill Miller for VP. I think it was more because of this. I asked to speak to you because I'm mad. I've known Barry Goldwater for a long time. When I hear people say he's impulsive and such nonsense, I boil over. Ronald Reagan telling America that he's mad. He's boiled over with rage over allegations that Gary Barry Goldwater might not have the appropriate emotional temperament to be president. I'm mad. Don't say he's mad. Probably didn't help. Uh, but because that is what the American people thought about Barry Goldwater, that he was a little... Uh, the Goldwater-Miller loss in 1964 was the worst Republican presidential loss in the modern era of American politics. Okay. And I am defining modern loosely. The parallels between Barry Goldwater picking Bill Miller and Mitt Romney picking Paul Ryan are kind of stunning. I mean, he is the same kind of pick with the same kind of rationale. Republicans put Bill Miller on that ticket in 1964 because he was essentially seen as being super Republican. They didn't think they'd be able to get New York State with him, where he was from, but they liked his partisanship. In the House, he had never really passed anything uh, of significance, neither has Paul Ryan, but he had a leadership role in the Republican Party. Mr. Miller had, in fact, been Republican Party chairman. He was seen as being a rather aggressive partisan. He was very popular among Republican Party activists. He was seen as a hardcore guy, even if he wasn't more widely known throughout the country. They thought that he was such a partisan Republican hero that he could really energize their side, and it would drive the Democrats nuts. Specifically, they thought that Bill Miller would drive the Democratic president they were running against, LBJ. They thought it would drive him nuts. They put that on the record. This is the front page of the Milwaukee Sentinel in October 1964. The last time Republicans picked somebody from the House to be vice president, it was for the same reasons. It was the exact same kind of pick as Mitt Romney and the Republicans picking Paul Ryan now. And it is early days yet. Um, but right now, at least, it's looking like the same kind of result. I mean, obviously, it's too early to say, but we are one week in. And I don't think it's unfair to say that this has been one of the all-time least successful rolls out of a, a vice presidential selection in modern history. I mean, maybe things will get better, but the first week has been bad. It started with the announcement itself, which became public knowledge at around 12.01 a.m. on a Friday night slash Saturday morning. That was then followed up by an early Saturday morning event. The Romney campaign made a big deal about how the announcement of the vice presidential choice was going to be carefully timed to reward their greatest supporters. The only people who were going to know who the pick was were the people who had downloaded the Mitt Romney cell phone app. They were going to learn it, learn it first. Instead, you know, midnight on a Friday night, there's Chuck Todd and it's on MSNBC at midnight. Yeah, I don't know. Then there was the actual announcement itself. Join me in welcoming the next president of the United States, Paul Ryan. Every now and then, I'm known to make a mistake. <laughs> I did not make a mistake with this guy. <laughs> but I can tell you this, he's going to be the next vice president of the United States. <laughs> Handled charmingly. Not a great beginning. Uh, luckily for the Romney campaign, President Obama had actually made a similar, though not quite as bad, version of the same mistake when he announced Joe Biden as his running mate back in 2008, but still not an auspicious start. And then there was the question of the staging. Why were they running out of a battleship? I mean, the, the official line was that they had been touring the battleship that morning. So they went on a tour and then all of a sudden realized they had to be out at the podium and so they run down off the gangplank of a battleship? These two men, both of whom have been of military age during major American wars, neither of whom served, still using a decommissioned battleship to imply maybe that they have military service that they do not have. And then whether you liked the announcement or not, uh, it was all over by 10.30 on a Saturday morning. And then America woke up and wondered, what happened? What did I miss? That was followed by the first solo campaign event for the newly minted vice presidential nominee. And here's what that looked like.
is, she must not be from Iowa. She must not be from Iowa. It turns out that the, the woman who was yelling at him actually was from Iowa. Uh, despite what Paul Ryan was saying about it, she later wrote about it on the Huffington Post. Uh, what she was screaming at him about, what the hecklers who were dragged out of his first event were screaming about, was Paul Ryan's plan to kill Medicare. Uh, Paul Ryan's plan to kill Medicare also dominating all of these local headlines in Florida newspapers. That was uh, the initial swing state response to who Mitt Romney picked as his running mate. If the Romney folks could have seen anything coming about picking Paul Ryan, they should have seen the, having the answer for the Medicare thing coming. Uh, the Romney campaign apparently did not plan for that. They did not come up with what they were going to say about Paul Ryan's Kill Medicare plan. When Mr. Romney was asked about the Paul Ryan plan, right after he made the announcement that same weekend on Sunday, he said, essentially, forget about the Paul Ryan plan. My plan is different from his, and that's the one we're going to run on. Mm. And the next day, he said, my plan for Medicare is very similar to his plan. The day after that, one of his surrogates went on television and said, actually, the plans are very oh. different. Then the day after that, Mr. Romney told reporters that the plans are quite Okay, Eddie. <laughs> I got tired. I, this is still running. I'm going to put you on camera and say thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, that was very kind. Oh, I think I'm going to lay down for a while. Rachel, I love that segment Rachel did, but now she's getting, she's kind of getting into the weeds of politics, so I'm going to end this.